Just on the Chevron buyback story, what, what, what exactly is the problem that you guys have? Because this is a company, along with many others, that's spending $14 billion on R&D to increase production in this country. So look, we learned today, as you noted in your earlier segment, that in the, at the last quarter of 2022, the last half of 2022, that our economy grew at a solid pace. We got annualized 2.9% GDP. We saw that. We, we also had unemployment insurance claims today. We see that unemployment insurance claims remain you know, near historic lows. Uh, all the while, we see the, you know, the quarterly price index for GDP uh, has moderated. Uh, I have not seen the monthly change. I'll, uh, I'll get that later today, and we'll report that tomorrow. But we see that inflation, uh, CPI, PPI, that's easing. So we see an economy that has uh, been resilient. Uh, we see prices easing. Uh, and all the while, if we think about what the president was just talking about, uh, all the investment that we are in the process of starting to do and will continue to do of investing in America, this president, is his entire focus is on making the important investments so that we can increase productivity here uh, and generate economic growth that is sustainable and that is more widely shared. So, you know, the, the issue with Chevron's buyback is they made record profits. They could choose to invest that. We know we have big challenges in energy going forward. They could choose to invest that. Instead, they chose to do stock buybacks. This is a president that is focused on our future, focused on making investments, making things here in America, ensuring that Americans have jobs here uh, in a way that is sustainable and, again, more equitably shared. I think ju just on this point, and, and then we can talk about the broader economy, just on the Chevron point, you know, it, it, it fuels this idea that the president is at war with the with the oil industry and, and they're not speaking the same language when when, in fact, these oil companies are increasing their production, their capex. And as far as, you know, capital <laughs> discipline, they're they're doing it the best way they know how. I, I think back to the early 2010s when the oil companies just spent everything on production and then we had a glut and then we had six years of a bear market that crushed their that crushed their companies. So I don't know. It, it, it feels like. A difficult thing to tell them how to manage their capital. Well, look, the president understands that the companies need to make their investments and they're making their decisions. Uh, but what we what we can see is that the price signal suggests that we you know we should be making these kinds of investments. Uh, energy is crucial to our economy. Uh, the president believes in uh, you know again forward looking. We need to be making investments to ensure we get that we have the energy we need to power this economy. Uh, you know, he's a president also that believes that. Uh, the, the kinds of revenues of rents should be more equitably shared in this, uh, uh, among Americans. So the president is mostly focused on the fact that we need all hands on deck as we focus on investing in our energy sector, and he expects the energy companies to participate in that. Yeah, well, I think they would argue that they are. But on, on the economy, Chair Rouse, you know, the GDP number certainly looked good on the surface, but one and a half percentage points of growth was, was inventory builds, which isn't necessarily what you want to see for healthy growth, is it? Well, so, look, as, the, as we've all understood, the growth in 2021, what, 5.7%, was largely fueled by our recovery from the pandemic recession. That was unsustainable. So we've known that we're going to need to make this transition to a lower level of growth that is more sustainable. Uh, that is powered by productivity increases, and that was going to involve, uh, you know, easing off of the altitude that we achieved last year. So th we expect it to cut. To, th we expect GDP growth to slow down. Uh, we believe this is part of the transition, and that we were, we're we are again, as I mentioned before, we're mm -hmm. looking forward to uh, you, you know achieving the kind of productivity growth that's powered by increases in productivity that are solid and sustainable. Uh, and therefore will, you know, and, and generate that we have economic growth going forward for decades to come. Here, here at CNBC, we, we cover the companies, and every day there are at least a few high-profile companies, whether through their earnings reports or separate announcements that are, are laying off workers, thousands of workers. And now it's expanded from high-growth tech companies that boomed during COVID to, to other companies like IBM, Dow Chemical. I mean, we're showing a wall with some of the recent announcements. What do you make of, the, of this growing trend? How concerned are you? So we do keep our eye on the data. What you're citing are individual companies making these announcements. Uh, I just noted that if we look at unemployment insurance claims uh, this week, if we average over the last four weeks, if we go back, 
uh, they've, they've remained low. That said, we are keeping our eye on these data. We're looking at the Warren data as they come out, uh, and we will, you know, look to respond as we go forward. But at the moment, we are you're responding to, and we are keeping our eye on as well individual companies. But they're not res they are not reflecting at the moment the the broader economy. What, what, when you say we will respond, what what do you mean? What would be the response from the White House to well, increasing unemployment? Well, we look. We understand that we're going to have to have a, a renormalization as we get through. We, we are still working through the the effects of the pandemic, so we know that there's going to be a renormalization. What I'm responding to is the fact that uh, we understand that there may be some as the the Federal Reserve cools the the economy. Um, there may be some response in the labor market, but we have countercyclical measures, unemployment insurance. Uh, we have, again, these investments that we see through the bipartisan infrastructure law.